Hello everybody, how's it going today? It's now March the 6th, Tuesday, 2018. It's about 5 in the morning Central Standard Time, and we're going to take a look at Bitcoin. I'm also going to be keeping an eye on another coin called Walton Chain, if you guys have heard of it, because my friend Mel is fairly invested in it. So I want to do her a favor and keep track of this WTC coin for her quite a bit. And then I'm, I'm taking a look at Bitcoin, Litecoin, Walton Chain, NEO, EOS, XRP as well, and Ethereum. Those are going to be the seven coins that I keep track of fairly well for this month. Every month I've got a new coin pick, and uh, this one is definitely going to be one that's going to be on my mind. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. Now, I didn't get back on time earlier today. I apologize, guys. My target still stands at about $12,700 to $13,000, but um, I didn't get to wake up on time to talk about this pullback that was going to happen. I'm having a little bit of a back issue right now from my weekend extravaganza, and I took a, like a Tylenol nighttime pill. I didn't think it would knock me out for 12 hours, but it did. But this pullback, I definitely had it on my mind. And um, I apologize for not getting to you guys a little bit sooner about it. And I am expecting some pullbacks. Um, if you guys don't know what a pullback means, that just basically means um, a price correction, like a, a consolidation period where we're moving backwards in price a little bit before we make a bigger uptrend. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's take a look at the weekly chart first, guys. We didn't even talk about the weekly chart last time. So let's do this. On the weekly chart, ever since we saw this Dragonfly Doji right here, it was pretty good news, right? We saw a massive rally. That you know, it, it was a big rally, guys. It went from it went it did almost a hundred percent. We'll say that way, okay? From the low of six thousand dollars all the way to the high of about seven eleven thousand seven eighty eight. I see a lot of coins right now. If you guys are seeing my RSI alerts go off here tons of really good coins that are reaching over sold zones which might even signal for a short-term trade i apologize if you guys see that come up every so often here so on the weekly chart we see that it closed off with a fairly bullish candle and every time it finishes off with a bullish candle like that it signals to the market that's doing all right but of course we couldn't really break a higher high than it thus far i do believe that later in the week we will get a higher high than this range here of 11,549 but not until we see a slight pullback. So let's go to coin market cap very quickly as well and see where we stand. We've actually lost $13 billion in the entire market since I did my last TA on Bitcoin, which was only about 12 hours, hold on, 15 hours ago about. Yeah, so we see Bitcoin here, of course, still number one. And yesterday we saw all the coins in the green or the majority of them, we saw Ripple up double digits we saw stellar up almost double digits as well today everything is going to be down for a while that i'm pretty sure of and probably for the next few days as well so let's look, take a look at the 24-hour volume if you guys don't know how to get to the 24-hour volume let me show you the 24-hour volume just click on 24-hour volume here and then go to historical data the historical data will show you a lot of information here so, for example, the, the market cap of Bitcoin, um, the, the over 24-hour volume, just the general, the general volume of the entire market cap for all crypto has decreased by about 13 billion. We were at 473 billion yesterday, 24 hours ago. So, if we look at the volume today, it's actually steadily increasing compared to yesterday. Not bad. But now we're at 6 point, or sorry, yesterday compared to the day before, $400 million higher. But today, we're only about 11 hours into the day. And we're down about $200 million already. This short pullback will unfortunately bring it down to, I'm guessing, maybe $6 billion, 24-hour volume. Maybe even to these ranges over here, near the 25th range. Not bad. We got a high of 11700 as expected. There were some days we were pretty much getting that exact amount, but we just couldn't break it. So let's see what it's doing now on the charts. I'm not going to do a too of a detailed Elliott wave analysis because I'd like to focus on price action combined with RSI. So what we see for RSI right here is that it's slowly, slowly increasing, guys. What I like to do with RSI is, or what I like about RSI rather, is that it's a real-time gauge of momentum changes and how much strength there is or isn't in the market. It's definitely one of my favorite indicators of all time. It's such a good gauge compared to moving averages, put it that way. 
moving averages, unfortunately they lag because it's taking the average samples of the previous price history there's always some lag, lag into it. Um, that's why when we compare things to RSI or even um, even price action, right, and volume especially, we get a much better gauge. If we look at the volume for the week, it's not looking that good right now, guys. Last week was pretty low, right? Here, great volume. Lower volume, higher volume, lower volume. And this week, I know that we're only a few days into the week, only two days about. It's still steadily declining if we can actually take a notice of here, okay? Do you see this orange line right here? That orange line right there is basically, I'm going to make it yellow just to make it more visible for you guys. This volume right here, this moving average volume, it, it starts to show that it's bearishly diverging right now. And we will get a short pullback. Trust me, guys, we're going to get it. And I want to go over Brown Cadence's RSI rules as well, just to establish some theories before we get into it. Brown's RSI rule states that anywhere between this region right here, between 65 and 35, or maybe 30 and 60, is considered a neutral zone. Until we break into a bullish zone, we're not, we want it to be around here, okay? We try to establish some sort of precedent for support, and we can kind of see it around here, 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 and here. So this is a great RSI support now. A bullish RSI would be considered anywhere between, say, 40 and up, and to very, very high numbers. As you guys can see here, Bitcoin, before it's reaching even 95 RSI for the week. As soon as it reached 95 for that week, guys, I mean, it was so clear. It was super clear that there's going to be a correction soon. As soon as it peaked out to around there, and we saw bearish divergence on the RSI, the signal right here pretty much short the market, and that's what people did. And then the crossover, notice it's right there. The crossover is a lagging indicator of the MACD, right? The moving average convergence divergence. And because we see a crossover over here, it's unfortunately a lot more laggy, for example, than the RSI, right? And because we saw a crossover here, yeah, a lot more people entered a short there. But this right here also starts to confirm since the negative histogram went lower there. Or since the histogram went to the negative side, that definitely signaled to the market to enter a short. So now, what is considered a bearish zone for RSI? It would be anywhere between this range right here to very low RSIs. So we're having a lot of trouble breaking this right here. This specific range is where the RSI resistance is. And until we break this range, specifically this one right here, in my opinion, 61, we're not going to consider it a bullish market. And I don't see a bullish market happening until the very end of maybe March, maybe early April, or even mid-April. So let's go over some more candles right now in a detailed chart. So here on the weekly, or the daily rather, what we see is we're looking for a moving average where the yellow line supports all of it from below. As you guys can see over here, we see the moving average. I won't review it again. Make sure you guys check out some of my other videos to get an idea of how the moving average strategy works. So if the yellow line is supporting below all of them, right, and it goes in the order of 8, 13, 21, and 55, you've got a very bullish market if the 55 is supporting all of it. And you don't basically sell until it crosses over. So what we're hoping for in the next few days after the short pullback is for the yellow line to support below all of them that'd be great i do expect guys a pullback once again so keep that in mind before we start to trend up to the thirteen thousand range specifically twelve thousand seven hundred this candle right here that just finished yesterday it's borderline shooting star but this one right here signaled to the market uh the day before that the market the bull market was coming close to an end all right this long wick down implies psychologically that the bears are pushing it down, but the bulls have defended it by pushing it back up. But that statement alone, saying that, well, the previous candle before, the bulls had full control with a lot of volume and a big green candle, right? With barely any wicks, barely no rejection to the downside. So bulls won this day, clear as day. But this one right here shows that the bears are at least on the offense and they are people are taking profit or shortering. Um, shorters have entered the market as well. So this candle right there showed that the bulls were starting to lose control. And then this candle right here, the bulls decided to say, you know what, we're going to make one last attempt and push the market up, right? 
they pushed it up there, but the bearish said, no, we're not having any of that. And the open to close is very important, okay? Let's say that this is the open, which it is, right, right there, the open. If the bulls pushed it up like that, and then they pushed it down, where it got a higher opening, or sorry, higher higher close than the opening, it would have been like a green doji candle, which wouldn't have been nearly as bearish. But because the bears pushed it down much lower than the opening, it formed a red candle like that, which signaled to the market that because of these two days combined, right here, right, because of these two days combined, the bulls are definitely losing control if they have not lost it entirely. So this candle, as soon as it formed, I can assure you that a lot of people enter who do a price action analysis and read candlesticks the way that I'm doing it, they have absolutely taken some profit and they've also entered a short position as well. And clearly we can see that, not, or sorry, 11 hours into the day that the bears are absolutely winning right now. So where do we find support, guys? We find support, first of all, between this region right here, okay? First of all, we take a look at history and we see that this candle bounced off of the, I think it's the 13, yes, the 13 moving average. And we also want to use a 55 moving average always as a very hard type of support. So that's going to be my first region to see if I can enter a long position. Now we have to keep in mind that nobody is ever going to catch the exact bottom and sell at the very top. What we do as a good trader is we try to accumulate very slowly and we micro buy and we ladder into our position slowly. Take my advice guys, if you guys are buying into one position with one single click all the time, regardless of how big it is or how small it is, that's a really bad way to play because you trap yourself into this one position, especially if you play your entire bankroll. Never play your entire principal. You don't want to do that guys. Whatever equity you guys have online, play only a portion of it because you leave the rest to accommodate for swings. If it goes a little bit lower and you're still very bullish, for example, and you've bought a little bit already, you might want to consider buying more on the dip. Because if you do buy on the dip and you're still fairly bullish, you can dollar cost the average in a much more effective way than staying in that one position where you bought at. So my first position that I'll be looking at buying is around 10,800 or to 10,700 around there. Now, if it does go lower, no problem. I'm still very bullish on Bitcoin, and I will absolutely be considering to buy more. Now, if we look on the here, right, we can start seeing it down tick already over the past few days on the histogram. The histogram gives us a very good gauge of positive or negative price movement for price action. Histogram is also one of my favorite indicators because it does not lag, all right? It does not lag, unlike the moving averages. So some of my favorite tools to use or indicators or to way to uh, do technical analysis would be volume, RSI, histogram, price action as well. Awesome things to get a gauge of. On a 12 hour chart, we're looking at a bullishly or sorry, bearishly diverge already. You guys see right here where these areas right here, basically a hard resistance, right? And then over the next few days, what we see is that it can't simply break above this resistance right here. So what ends up happening is the next one formed a series of a lower high, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high than that one right there. As soon as this formed, this one specifically right there, I'm going to draw a, whole, a vertical line for you guys to see it right here. That signaled to a lot of people probably to enter a, a short but the, the one signal would probably be the one after. So this guy right there, regardless of where it was, see what I mean? This is on a 12 hour chart, right? As soon as this candle formed right there and we were getting a series of a lower high on the RSI, boom, people entered a trade or short position around 11,400. And as we can see already, we're down ticking $200 since the beginning of this video here. Now, another really big indicator that's showing that it's fairly bearish now Short term, keep in mind guys, the last thing we want is to get this correction that could last anywhere between one to three days, two to four days, to a whole weekly correction. Now, if we get a whole week of correction, I'm going to be a little bit scared of this bull market that I consider we are in right now for short term or medium term even. If we end up getting a correction for a week, I might have to change my bias to bearish, right? Now what we see right here is it starts to bearishly diverge as well. The histogram, we're about to get a negative crossover. 
when this negative crossover happens, it simply means that the histogram will go to the negative side and will be down ticking. So where are we finding support in the 12 hour? On the 12 hour, we're finding support at the 21 EMA right here, which is still around my buy zone between 10,800 and 10,700 ish. Decent. Okay. Let's keep moving down and see what we see. Now, what we see here as well, of course, is more bearish divergence when we start connecting these lines. Where do we find support on a six hour? We find support roughly here. Will it hold? I don't know. We'll see. But if we go all the way back, what we see is support, support, acted as resistance, support, support range there. So we should see some sort of reaction in the market around, uh, I'm guessing a little bit lower, probably around slightly lower, still by the same range between 10,700 and 10,800. So now we're in the negative already for this, right? Last thing we want is to tick down all the way like that. What we want, guys, in the six hour is something like this. Let me draw it. We want a slight tick down like that and curving up. Not a big one. Very, very small one. There's a possible chance for us to bounce off of this 55. And that's what I'm hoping for, guys. I'm hoping for us to bounce above $10,700. Here, it's very, very, very clear that we see major support above the 55 EMA. Will it hold on the four hour chart? Maybe. We might even go into the negative side underneath the 55 EMA just for a little while. So if you guys notice, for example here, okay? It only stays in the negative side under the 55 EMA for a little bit, right? Until it sets itself up for a major uptrend like right here. So if you guys were playing on the four hour chart, but before I, before I say that, I, I hope you guys have done your research. I hope you've taken a look at my time frames video. It's very important that you guys understand time frames. Time frames, you have to think of it like you have to think of it like the big picture and a little picture. And every time frame tells a different story. But when you look at every single time frame together, it creates this overall picture for you. So you have to look at dailies, at weeklies, 12 hours, 6 hours, 4 hours. Right? And then if you would like to analyze it a lot further, then you might want to go to, for example, the one hours and underneath that. So in the three hour chart here, what we're seeing is, I don't think this will hold guys. I don't think this will hold the 55 EMA on here in a very short time frame. I think we're going to break slightly below it. I think if I go to lower time frame, like the one hour, we're probably, yes, see, we're breaking below it already. As you guys have noticed right here. In fact, right here, as soon as we cross over when this when this uh, time frame ticks to zero and this candle forms, then we will be safely be able to say that the 55 EMA will now be resisting all of it above all these other EMAs, which will actually signal to a lot of people in the market to enter a short, in my opinion. We'll see. We see on the one hour, the our size, sorry, it's actually 27. It's in the negative right now already. Here it's under 30 already it's going to the when i say negative i mean under 30 okay guys we're here we're seeing it under 30 already on the 45 on the 30 minute chart we're seeing it under 30 we're seeing it at 24 right now guys on the 15 minute chart and notice how despite how negative we are under 30 on the rsi there's not really a lot of buyers rushing in right now and this was very obvious this little consolidation phase that it was going to break down eventually it just didn't really have the volume to try to push it up and it was resistant right here at the 25 ema even on the 20, 10 minute we're pretty low right now guys we are incredibly low on here see here 21 guys not looking too good right now for the bulls put it that way we're at 17 right now check that out we are at 17 for the five minute rsi is there a, a lot of buyers rushing in to save the day no not at all, actually, guys. There's not a lot of buyers. So if we look at it quickly from the perspective of Elliott Wave, which I kind of don't want to do right now because I'm confused with my count. That is the absolute truth, okay? What I can do, assume is that this is wave one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and I do expect a fifth touch somewhere up there, but not before we make a correction. Now, there's going to be lots of overlapping rules that are going to be broken, I'm sure. That's why it's incredibly hard to even do a count right now on it. What I do see is a horizontal resistance like that. 
and you know if, if I try to draw a channel that's grasping on straws to be quite honest I can't really see myself drawing any type of channel here and if I do an Elliott wave count the wave counts are very very off guys I'm, I'm talking like very very off okay uh, let's let's just see here what I'm talking about so let's say that this ended up making some sort of I don't know expanded flat or is that even possible let me have a look I mean sure we can keep our channel like that I guess we can see on the four hour chart if it's gonna bounce here first around the 10,800 ranges that I'm expecting it to and then if it does it might even channel up here but what kind of count is this guys this is a very difficult count to do it's one that's almost impossible that's why sometimes Elliott wave analysis it's not really the best way to analyze Sometimes price action is the absolute best way, and I recommend buying on the dip, right? You can basically buy the dip, or you could add more onto strength once it breaks key resistance areas. Now, where do I consider some of my support ranges? I consider my support ranges right here. 10,775, and the next one will, of course, be down over here, around 10,200. Now, let's just say we try to do an Elliott Wave count on here. I mean... It's a hard count, guys. Is this one, two, three, four, and five? Okay, well, let's say we said that was five right there. Where's the other waves for here? I don't see them in here, okay? It's almost impossible to even break this down right here. So let's say we did this. One, two, and this was all three-ish, right? This region there. Four, is this five? If that was five, yeah, I guess you can draw it like that. You would have to call this in here one, two, this is basically three, four, and that's five. Okay, that wave can be done like that. Now, people are saying, well, this is a third wave in here, right? Well, third waves move much more impulsively than that. Not only that, if we said that was a third wave, if we do, uh, if we measure the, the price action on here, right? This one moved about $18,000. We'll take a look at this, guys. That only moved 14 about, or sorry, 1800. This one only moved 1300. This one only moved about 1400. Where is the wave three? That's a big question. Where the heck is this wave three right now? So some people would even make this argument right here that, okay, maybe, maybe this finished already like that, okay? And that's wave five like that. And then maybe this is an ABC as well where we're going to get an ABC coming down to even lower. Well, that's possible, but we have to assume that this is a pretty crazy correction, guys. I mean, take a look at it. If that was the B point actually going up, take a look at how much it retraced. It almost retraced to one to one, which is actually very, very bullish, right? So it's hard for me to consider that that's a typical correction that's happening. So the way I'm looking at right now is I'm just waiting, guys. I'm waiting for it to find some support. I'm hoping for it to find support around this range right here for RSI. Well, hopefully that will coincide with either my 10,700 to 10,800 range or even lower to the 10,200, 300 ranges. So those are gonna be my major, major support areas that I will be considering buying on the dip. So let's clear all this out as well. Actually, no, I don't want to. Let's draw it on here. We have to acknowledge that it has broken out of this major, major trend line resistance, right? Here we got a slight little bear or bull trap rather. Always make sure you guys are consistent with drawing your lines like that. Is it possible for us to even go down to this lower range? Yeah, it's possible as well, as long as we don't go back into this bearish territory. This major resistance that was broken has to act as a major support now. So I'm just going to start showing you guys that right here is one of the support zones right i'll just take this out and this is also another support zone right here so this is again between 10,200 to 10,400 ish and this one right here is between 10,700 and 10,800 i will most likely be buying my positions around here and right around here because i'm fairly confident that we are going to enter a bull market in a few, hopefully five, six days about, maybe seven, 
five days at most, I'm hoping. If it goes longer than five days, my bias is going to change very quickly, guys, to, to bearish. And then I'll be adding more to my position at this previous high right here, which is 11,788. All right. And then the next one will most likely be over here where I'll add more as well to 13K ranges right over here. Actually, even here, I'll consider adding more around the 12,190 range. And then I'll add more definitely right here as well. So these are going to be the zones I will add into strength. Now, if I actually bought into these positions, right, at 12,000, or sorry, 10,700-ish, and fell even lower to 10,300, right? Let's say I bought, I don't have my Excel sheet up on this computer yet, right? So I'm just going to show you guys. 10,700 plus 10,300, right? Well, that's 21K, divide that by 2. Your average price is now 10,500 if you were to buy into these positions. So now you enter a position around here, regardless of where it is, get an average price of 10,500. And then I will end up shooting for still, guys, about 13K. That's still going to be my target up there. Well, more like 10,700 first, okay? Where would you put your stop loss? Well, you got to be pretty generous with your stop loss here, guys. And it's going to be a fairly risky play, right? A very risky play. But the more times that we break critical resistances, like here at 11,788, here at 12,190, here at 12, 12, oh, sorry, 13,170, the more of a chance we keep getting higher and higher where we can raise our stop loss, right? So if you guys are thinking of entering any position and accumulating during this downtrend and you're still going to stay biased, bullish, then you got to make sure that you allocate a lot of tolerance and room for it to breathe before you can even make these types of moves. So patience is extremely important, guys, right? Just because you see somebody say that it could get up to $13,000 doesn't mean it's going to skyrocket there. You guys got to get your mindset out of that and differentiate between what technical analysis says and what can actually happen the majority of times during the during the way as well. Got to remember that there's always a lot of side stops. There's always going to be tiny little corrections in between everything going on. Elliott Wave is incredibly hard to analyze from this perspective right now. So you guys just have to be extremely, extremely, extremely patient and give this room to breathe. Let's say that, you know, we're still going for our first target there based on Fibonacci, one to one at least, right? We should be getting wave three if we if we called it like that, where wave three is often the longest and never the shortest. Heck, we should be aiming for at least 15,000, right? So that's why you guys got to give it a lot of room while incorporating things like Elliott Wave as well. If this is indeed the first wave that has happened, right? If that was the first wave, put it that way, I don't know if it actually is because I still expect possibly this one to be the fifth wave going up, right? Regardless of which alternate Elliott Wave one we draw, you guys have to acknowledge this massive red line that I'm about to draw for you. This line right here was the major, major resistance that was broken, and it now acts as a support. That's why you guys got to at least allocate a very generous, super generous, guys, um, tolerance for your stop loss. So when I, and you know, you got you to gotta take a lot of risks sometimes. Without risk, there's no possibility of reward, right? And you have to be extremely patient. If you're not a patient trader, you guys are going to get destroyed in the market. So make sure you're exercising that patience. And I'm just giving you guys my rough idea of what's going on. I'll probably end up targeting 13K, knowing me, where I'll ladder my profits a little bit. I'm done day trading, if you guys don't know. I'm uh, not really scalping anymore. I'm more so focusing on content for you guys. And I'll be doing a lot more TA as soon as my hardware and uh, security is set up because I want to take swing positions. I actually want to get into the interviewing scene as well, Well, I'll, where um. I'll be approaching a bunch of different coins and talking to prominent people in the community on, for example, YouTube as well. And I don't know, I just want to branch out a little bit. These are just some thoughts that are thrown out there right now. Not guaranteed I'll be moving into that direction. But one thing that is guaranteed is that I will be swinging for a lot more from now on. I want to have more time for myself as well. Day trading takes up a lot of time. 
and scalping takes up even more time. So let's give swinging a try like I used to a few years back. So this will be an awesome swing position from my perspective. I plan to start accumulating around 11,700-ish and 11,200-ish or 300-ish to get a base price of around 10,500. Sorry if I kept saying 11,000. I'm super groggy, guys. That uh, Tylenol nighttime pill, it really threw off my groove. That's why I'm having a lot of trouble speaking right now as well. I feel like my mouth is really dry, like my tongue is frozen or something like that, you know? So then I will be allocating a stop loss slightly below the swing low, right over here. So my stop loss will be super generous. I'm uh, very patient, guys. I don't mind taking a risk to reward ratio of 1.88. Some people will only say take two and up, take three and up, take four and up. Myself, I'm a very risky trader and I can manage my positions fairly well by accumulating and dollar cost averaging. Risk management is the most important aspect of trading, guys. If you guys are only focusing on buying and selling and you don't really know where to enter your positions and you don't really know um, you don't really know how to dollar cost average. Not, not a really good sign, guys, because traders like myself and uh, other people who have been doing this a while, we focus on risk management and possible setups that obtain high, high rewards with very low risk, right? So make sure you guys are understanding what risk to reward is. This is a risk to reward of 1.88. Is it a good setup to take? Yeah, it's pretty good to me, guys. And depending on what it is, right, it might even be lower than that depending on how well you accumulate and how much you buy on the bottom. So these are my quick thoughts right now. This is the play I plan to take. I do expect the correction, guys, for the next few days. How low it'll go, I don't know. But one thing I'm certain of is it needs to stay above this red line where we broke out of before. And hopefully in the daily, we're not going to go lower than the 55 EMA by more than much. See, see right here? I'm going to try to zoom in as best as I can here. If you guys take a look right here, this region that I'm about to highlight, that is a different color, I'll make it like pink or something, or purple, this region here is the region where I do expect it to cross over, right? The, the, the purple region right here. I expect it to cross over, definitely into this purple region right here, that will be below the 55 moving average, right? And then it'll set us up for a very nice bull rally in the next few days if we can maintain our position around there. So the lowest I expect it to go is about 10,300. But what I do expect it to go to is about 10,700 for sure. As we've seen it drop $250 already since the beginning of this video. And then after that, if it does go to this region, I will absolutely add more to my position since I'll stay bearish or bullish bias for a while. And then once it breaks this position right here at 11.788, I will add more to my position. When it breaks over here, I'll add more to my position as well. Here is where I plan to ladder some of my profits, right? As most people will as well, I'm sure. 13K is a pretty significant number in my opinion. I'll take some of my profits here. Not all of it though, not all. I'll step a slight correction to maybe 12,200 where I'll add even more to my position. And then hopefully we will get up to the 15k scenario that I've been talking about for a while now. Anyways, this is my quick thoughts for Bitcoin. It was a, a very different type of technical analysis, just more so playing I spy with my little eye. I hope you guys appreciate it. If you do, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the material as well. I no longer have a Steemit account. I've gone through the process recovery as, as well. Uh, hopefully I'll get it back. It's only like 2k whatever if i don't i'm already in the process of creating a new steemit account that i hope to share with you guys down the road as well so anyways have yourselves a great night and i'll keep you guys updated later in the day bye now take care